Okay, we're going to take a look at installing Eagle on the Ubuntu platform. Uh, this is Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, open a uh, web browser. Now, one of the things that um, we've done prior to uh, this um, installation process here is there's two videos that you'll want to take a look at uh, that's been, that have been done previously. One is uh, registering with Eagle, uh, and you'll be giving them your uh, name and your um, email address, etc. And um, the second thing that we've done is we've done a <coughs> video discussing uh, under a user's uh, home directory, a directory under dot .local slash bin. Uh, you want to take a look at those two videos because this will incorporate uh, what you've learned from or what you've done from those. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is come down here to uh, the search bar or the uh, Google bar here, and we're going to type in uh, Autodesk. That's the company that now uh, maintains Eagle. And then Eagle, free download okay now um, I actually when I registered I registered and I got uh, you know under I registered under the educational site <coughs> and I, was, I said I was a system administrator and um, faculty and students can actually download a version that's much more powerful than what we're going to download I'm going to show how to download the personal version which is good enough for most people um, for you know most small projects uh, and so anyways let, we'll, we'll go ahead and proceed so here it says free software for student and educators uh, nope we want the one here that says download Eagle free download Autodesk and so after when you come into that page um, it'll say uh, downloads for download for Linux and you want to make sure that you click the thing here that says save file okay so we click the radio button that says save file uh, and now uh, if you're doing this uh, at home under us on a relatively slow DSL line it can take like up to eight minutes to download so you have to be patient uh, it's like 140 uh, gigabyte I think we'll take a look here real quick so uh, my browser wasn't set up to ask me where to download so it's going to uh, download into and I'm going to hold down the control shift and hit the plus key once or twice here to make it uh, a little bit bigger there we go and if I type in ls and downloads you'll see how big it is uh, it's 162 megabytes. Sorry, I said gigabytes. That's silly. Uh, 162 megabytes. Um, <coughs> so uh, you'll notice that the file name ends in uh, tar.gz. I can probably. Okay. You'll notice the file name ends in uh, tar.gz. Um, so this is a uh, gzipped tar file. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, unzip it. So g unzip. Some people call it gunzip. And if I do an ls, you'll you'll see it's now just a tar file. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually move this in to right under my home directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type mv space a u t o and since I've typed enough of the file name that is unique I can now hit my tab key and that will auto complete it uh, auto complete the file name. So and then I'm going to <coughs> type dollar sign h o m e and that that's an environmental variable that uh, is your home directory if I type slash home slash David on this example that won't work for you 
but if I use dollar sign H-O-M-E for everybody, that will translate to your home directory. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to hit enter. And if I type ls, you'll see that that file is now gone. If I type cd and return, that puts me in my home directory. I'll look at my present working directory. That's my home directory. And if I type ls, you'll see that Autodesk file has been now been moved to my home directory from my downloads directory. So now what I want to do with the tar file, and a tar file is, a, is, is one file that has a whole bunch of files combined into it. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to extract that tar file, and I'll do that by typing tar dash x for extract, v for verbose, show me what you're doing, f for file name, auto, now that's enough of the file name that is unique in this directory, so I can hit my tab key and it will auto-complete it, and then I can hit enter. I'll type ls, and a directory that was not there before is that directory uh, that is eagle-9.4.2. So if I do a change directory into eagle.9.4.2 and type in ls, you'll see there's a file in there that's green and it's eagle. That's the uh, executable uh, to run eagle. So uh, I could just try and run it from here, but what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to uh, do a change directory to go to my present, or so my present working directory is my home directory. And now this, what I'm going to do next requires you to have watched a prior video that talked about the uh, dot local slash bin directory. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a change directory into dot local slash bin. This is a directory we made in a previous uh, video. And if I do an ls, you'll see there's nothing in there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a symbolic link. And it, uh, so it's pretty easy to do. Uh, we're going to type dot, oops, we're going to, yeah, we're going to type ln, that's the link command, dash s, that means it's going to be symbolic. And so then we're going to type uh, dollar sign H-O-M-E slash dot local slash, oh, sorry, dollar sign home, and then eagle. And we can hit our tab key here. And watch what happens to that dollar sign home. For me, it's going to change to slash home slash David. For you, it's going to change to your home directory. Okay? And then, uh, so now what we'll type is eagle. Okay? And then we'll hit enter. Now if I type ls, you'll see there's a... Uh, file in there called eagle. That's actually a symbolic link. If I type ls-l, you'll see that file is pointing to that executable uh, for eagle. Okay. So now if I do a cd and an enter and type pwd, it shows I'm in my home directory. If, the, if I type eagle, it's going to go ahead and it's going to run that executable uh, the Eagle executable. <coughs> so now, uh, what I can do is I can hit uh, yes to continue. First time you run, you have to uh, do a little. You have to do a little setup. After you do this setup, you don't have to do it in the future. So I'm, I, as I mentioned, I had uh, created an account prior, um, and there's a video that shows how I did it. If you didn't do that, you can always just go ahead and create an account right here. Um, in this process. So I'm going to put my uh, user ID in or my email address is what they're looking for. And now it's going to be my password. And this is a password I set up when I registered for Eagle. And now what 
what happens is is um, when you register, you have to use something called uh, two-factor authentication. So whenever I try to, um, uh, whenever you log in or do a setup like this, it sends me a text message with a code. And um, the good thing about that is it makes it less likely that people are going to use your ID to get illegitimate copies of Eagle. So they sent me a code. And you'll get your own code. So I entered my code. Entered my code. So it's verifying. And it should come up here. I'm running on a virtual machine, so there's a little bit of slowness happening. happening. There you go. Sometimes when I take that browser out of Maximize, it works better on the virtual machine. Okay, so this is what the beginning interface of Eagle looks like. And you can, you know, go ahead and you can create your new uh, schematics, boards, whatever. And uh, and this is, this is the uh, initial screen that you get when you run Eagle. So that's what it takes to <coughs> uh, run Eagle. And from now on, if I, let me just go ahead and log out here. And I'll pretend like I'm coming in for the first time under my David ID. Okay, and then what I do is I go ahead and I open a terminal. And I type eagle. Oh, let me, again, my uh, running on the virtual machine gets things to look a little funny sometimes. And I type eagle. It will come right up. And again, there we go. And I accidentally clicked on a uh, video here. Um, they have some learning videos in, embedded inside their in introductory screen. So, uh, and, and I accidentally clicked on this video. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's all it takes. And I hope this was helpful. And thanks for listening.